everyone, it's Lauren with AKE Safety Equipment. At this point in the year, everyone is looking forward to some nice spring weather. But with the amount of snow that the Midwest has received this winter, flooding is definitely a risk for many. A lot of parts of South Dakota and Nebraska are already experiencing devastating flooding due to the record-breaking amounts of snow they've received, and on top of that, a lot of rain. But as the temperatures continue to rise and we get more rain this spring, there's sure to be a lot more flooding. But unfortunately, if you experience flooding, water damage should not be your only concern. You should also be aware of the fire hazards due to flooding. Water causes damage and corrosion in electronics and electrical circuits. Corrosion is what creates resistance, which results in overheating of the circuit. Overheating then causes additional damage, and so the cycle continues. Eventually, the circuit gets to the point where the conductors become so hot, it ignites surrounding materials such as drapes, furniture, or even carpet. Water damage can also cause a short circuit arc that results in sparks and ultimately fire. In fact, most electrical fires are from some form of arcing. Arcing is what occurs when there is a break in an electrical circuit. This causes a current to jump across a gap, which produces sparks and high heat. A fire occurs in this case when the sparks connect with any surrounding combustible materials. Floodwaters can contain mud that may deposit in your electronics, which can cause overheating, malfunction, or failure. These waters can also contain other toxic substances, such as fuels, solvents, cleaning chemicals, industrial chemicals, sewage, fertilizers, pesticides, and even herbicides. If these get heated, they could start fires and may release gas, carcinogens, allergens, or poisonous fumes. Due to these hazards, we recommend being prepared with an extinguisher like Stop Fire in case of fire does occur. We suggest our Stop Fire High Capacity Extinguisher because it has the most firefighting power. However, if you want something that's smaller, a little more compact, and easy to carry on your hip, we suggest our Stop Fire Mini. Some other dangers to be aware of when entering a flooded area also include drowning, open sump pits, underwater objects, chemical burns, poisoning, and irritations to skin, sinuses, or eyes. Due to these many hazards, we suggest avoiding contact with floodwaters as much as possible. But if you have no other choice and need to go in, always wear protective clothing and a mask as you never know what you may encounter. You should also keep in mind when going into flooded waters that electricity can travel through various paths, which can electrocute those that come in contact with them. Electricity can travel through things such as metal, like wiring, plumbing, or gas lines. It can even travel through water and soaked ground or carpet. When it comes to electricity and flooding, the best thing to do is make sure it's turned off until you know that it is safe. As long as the electricity is on, electrocution and fire are a hazard to be aware of. As a quick rule of thumb, keep in mind the following. Never step in standing water that covers electrical outlets or devices. Water could already be charged with electric current that could be deadly. Do not enter a room if you hear popping or buzzing noises. Also, do not enter a room if you see sparks. If you see downed power lines, avoid them and notify your local power provider immediately. You should also be on alert for an acrid or burning plastic smell, which could indicate an electrical fire. Do not attempt to operate electrical equipment or appliances that have been in contact with water until a certified electrician says that it is safe. It's also important to have a fire extinguisher nearby to prevent and minimize the dangers of fire. Electrical systems and their components remain at risk as long as moisture is present. Due to the fire hazard from wet electrical devices, it is best to treat all electrical appliances, equipment, and outlets with caution after flooding. Replace these items rather than trying to save them yourself. Be sure to replace outlets, switches, breaker boxes, AC units, furnaces, and anything else that may contain electric motors, switches, or wiring. If you're not sure what to replace, it's always best to call a professional. Warning signs to be aware of before an electrical fire include flickering or dimming of lights, which indicate one or more poor connections, which can actually create hot spots and arcing. Blown fuses and tripped circuit breakers that are also repeatedly occurring can mean that there's an issue with a short circuit. 
If your outlet has a burning smell or is hot to the touch, there is danger of electrical fire. If you're experiencing any of these issues that we have just talked about, you definitely need to call a professional so they can come address and fix it right away. We don't want you to become another statistic. We want to help you protect what matters most when you need it most. Because according to the NFPA, U.S. fire departments responded to an average of 45,210 home structure fires involving electrical failure or malfunction each year from 2010 to 2014. These fires caused an annual average of 420 civilian deaths, 1,370 civilian injuries, and ultimately resulted in 1.4 billion in direct property damage. Most of the injuries and deaths seen with electrical fires happen to those when they are sleeping or trying to escape from the fire. If you are sleeping, you may not realize what is happening until it's too late. That's why it's so important to keep fire extinguishers in your bedrooms so you can protect yourself and get to safety. But just having an extinguisher is not enough. You do need to know how to properly use it in the event of a fire emergency. In an emergency, it can be easy to get flustered and confused, especially if you're just waking up. That's why we love Stop Fire. It's super lightweight, compact, and so easy to use that even a four-year-old can do it. All you need to do is pull this pin here. This will come right off. Aim at the base of the fire and use short, quick targeted bursts like this. It's important to use the short, quick bursts because unlike other extinguishers, a little goes a long way. A stop fire is a gas and it actually expands to ultimately put out the fire. Compared to other extinguishers that are large and cumbersome like this one here, if I had a fire in the middle of the night, I'd rather have stop fire because it's super easy, lightweight. I don't have to think about what to do and how to use it. And I can use one hand. Unlike this extinguisher, I'd have to use two hands. I'd have to use this to aim. And it's honestly, you guys, it's really heavy. I don't think waking up in the middle of the night, I'd be able to function and put out a fire with something like this. As you prepare for the nice weather and possible flooding in your area, we hope you add a fire extinguisher to your list of necessities. You never know when a fire can happen. They don't exactly make appointments. Thank you so much for joining us today and we hope you learned a lot about flooding and fire safety. Make sure to check out our social media pages to participate in our contest this month. If you have any questions or would like to see a demo of Stop Fire in action, feel free to go to our website ake.com or give us a call at 800-586-1639. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.